Mr. Turtle Investor keeps at it year in and year out, and that's why he wins first place in the marathon. Chapter 5 The Four Animals in the Stock Market Let me introduce you to the four competitors in the race. First, Squirrel, the typical trader. Second, Rabbit, the trained trader. Third, Sloth, the typical investor. Fourth, Turtle, the trained investor. Let's start with Mr. Squirrel. Squirrel, the typical trader. Squirrel represents the newbie who gets into the stock market without understanding what he's getting into. These are all the Juliuses, Sarahs, and Belindas of the world. Squirrel also represents the old-timer in the stock market like the uncle of Julius. He's never learned his lesson. He earns some and loses some. It's true that this uncle of Julius is a wealthy man. But Julius never asked this important question. Where did his wealth come from? He presumed it came from the stock market. But that wasn't true. His uncle was a businessman. He earned his money running a big hardware store for the past 25 years. Here's the truth. If he wasn't trading foolishly, he would have been richer. Squirrel represents the 85% of people who get into the stock market and lose their money. On hot tips and penny stocks. Squirrel want excitement. They look at the stock portfolio every day. Usually, many times a day. They're ecstatic when they see their money go up. And they're depressed when they see their money go down. Like the squirrel in my story, they have so much energy. These typical traders buy now and sell a few days later. Sometimes, they buy and sell within a day. Like the squirrel that doesn't follow the road, typical traders don't follow the rules. Because trading for them isn't a science but an art. It's all about the gut and feeling. At the end of the day, most traders are really gamblers. Sadly, they're using the stock market as their online casino. As I mentioned above, 85% of people lose money in the stock market. And that's a fact. Because most people who get into the stock market are squirrels. Squirrels also try to take a lot of shortcuts. They want to make a quick buck. They hear a hot tip from an uncle or an office mate or a friend and buy the stock. Sometimes they earn a lot. When that happens, it feels like they're winners in the race. But that's not really true. Because growing your money isn't a sprint but a marathon. At the end of the day, all that they earn in the past, they lose in a couple of bad trades. Nothing is left. He had 10 million pesos. Let me tell you a true story. I know of a man who started with 7 million pesos in the stock market. He invested in hot tips and penny stocks. He bought and sold very frequently. At the start, he got lucky with some of his picks and the money grew to 10 million pesos. But 3 years later, do you know where he is? You can find him in the stock market anymore. Today, he has 600,000 pesos left. The rest was lost in a few bad trades. Because it just takes a few bad trades for a squirrel gambler to lose it all. Some traders are devious. That's not all the bad news. A few of these traders, like the squirrel in the story, are devious. They fool other traders. He told the rabbit to sleep and he pretended to sleep too, only to escape and run. Some bad traders tell their friends to buy a certain hot stock just so that the price will go up. Once it's up, they'll sell, leaving the others to hold an empty bag. Who knows? Perhaps the friend of the uncle of Julius was like this. Yes, devious squirrels may become rich. But what kind of wealth is that? In the end, they lose all their friends. That doesn't sound very wealthy to me. Here's the truth. In the story, the squirrel got lost in the forest and got killed by a bear. Typical traders also got lost 
in their trading and get killed by a bear market. And that's what you call a market that is going down. And then there is Rabbit. Rabbit, the trained trader. Rabbits are also traders, but they are trained traders. Most of them do nothing else but trade. Trading is their full-time job. For them, trading isn't an art but a science. They follow very strict rules. Like what rules? Trained traders don't touch penny stocks with a 10-foot pole. They only buy the stocks of giant companies. Another rule? Trained traders don't put more than 5% of their money in a specific stock. So if it sinks, at least it's only 5% of their money. Another rule? They never end a trading day with more than 30% of their money in the market. They don't like to be surprised. Trained traders are very conservative. These very strict rules prevent two things, big losses and big gains. But that's fine by that. That doesn't mean rabbits don't do foolish things. Even if they're trained traders, once in a while, some of them break the rules. After all, they're still human beings. The temptation to gamble is still there. And with all the tools at their fingertips, they occasionally break the rules to earn the fast buck. Which is one reason why, at the end of the race, they only win second place. After 20 years, the earnings of a turtle investor may still beat the earnings of a rabbit trader. Because these foolish things done once in a while will make them lose a part of their earnings. There is another reason why turtles beat rabbits, but I'll reserve that for a later chapter. But let me first answer this question. Are there really trained traders out there? Is it possible to become a very good trader? Like the rabbit who actually finishes second in the race? Yes. Sightings of these very rare creatures have been reported on planet Earth. I know of a few of them myself. For example, my stock market mentor has trained 40 plus highly skilled traders. He cherry picked them from the best schools. He made them go through rigorous training. My mentor gave his team of traders a modest goal to earn 5% a month or 60% a year. Why such a small goal? I mean, if these are great traders, shouldn't they be earning more like 200% a year? Because they're rabbits, not squirrels. They follow rules, rules that prevent big losses and big gains. I'm sure you know by now that I discourage anyone to become a trader, especially a squirrel trader. But if some of you really want to enjoy the excitement of trading, to be able to brag about your stock market exploits to your friends, then be sure to be a rabbit trader. Some of my friends have what they call play money. It's 20% of their total money in the stock market. That's what they use to trade. But 80% is what they use for long-term investments, using the total strategy, which I'll be explaining in a while. So they're a crossbreed. They're 20% rabbit and 80% turtle. If you want to do that, go ahead. But I urge you to study about trading seriously. Your play money is still money. In this book, I'm going to convince you to be a turtle because you want to be first in the race. But before that, let me introduce you about turtle's good friend, sloth. Sloth, the typical investor. Sloth is an animal that sleeps 16 hours a day. That's why I pick sloth to represent the typical investor. His main strategy, buy and hold. The sloth investor parks his money in a stock or mutual fund and forgets about it. Usually, it's a huge amount of money. Let me introduce you to Eddie. When Eddie was a little boy, his mother taught him how to save in a piggy bank. When he grew up, he never forgot this lesson. At the age of 31, Eddie was proud to have 500,000 pesos safely kept in a time deposit in a bank. But one day, he read my book, Eight Secrets of a Truly Rich. In that book, Eddie learned about the world of mutual funds. 
Eddie learned why he shouldn't put long-term investments in the bank. He learned that whatever little interest the bank gave, it would be eaten by a monster called inflation. Inflation means what you can buy with one peso today will cost you one peso and five cents by next year because the purchasing power of money decreases over time. So Eddie called up a huge mutual fund company. He learned that there are generally three types of mutual funds, equity funds, bond funds, and balance funds. Eddie asked the guy on the phone, can you explain these funds to me? Different kinds of mutual funds. Sure, the man said on the other line. An equity fund means the money is invested in the stock market. We'll manage your investments for you. Equity funds are highly volatile, but over 10 years or more, it'll have the greatest returns. What's a bond fund? Eddie asked. A bond fund means the money is invested in the Philippine government bonds. A bond is simply a piece of paper from the government with the words I owe you written on it. It's a very safe and stable investment. Even with the funny politicians running our government? The man chuckled. Yes, even if there's a coup d'etat, the government will still pay you. They're very safe, but don't expect high returns. Right now, you'll be earning 5-6% to 6 only per year. And let me guess, asked Eddie. A balanced fund means they put my money in both the stock market and bonds? That's right. So which do you choose? Gee, I don't know. You tell me. How old are you, Eddie? I'm 31. Working, I presume? Earning well? Not as much as I want to earn, but yes. How much do you want to invest? 500,000 pesos. That's good, Eddie, said the mutual fund guy. Here's my question. Will you need this money in the next 10 years? I don't think so. I'm earning decently from my job. I've got an emergency fund stashed in the bank for any uh, emergencies. So I'm earmarking that 500,000 pesos for my retirement years. That's great. In that case, I suggest you put this in an equity fund. That means we'll put your money in the stock market and we'll manage it for you. For a little management fee, of course. Okay, I'll do that. Drop by any time in the office and we'll do the paperwork. Thanks. That week, Eddie plunks in 500,000 pesos into the equity fund. And he forgets about it. If it grows at 12% a year, in 30 years, when he's 61, Eddie's 500,000 pesos would have become 15 million pesos. Not bad, right? Eddie is the sloth. He's your typical investor, or what you call a buy and hold investor. He buys and holds stocks for the long haul. It's a good strategy, not the best, but good enough. Do I recommend it? Only with certain conditions. Buy and hold strategy is okay if you do these four things. First condition. Obviously, you need to have a sizable chunk of money to do this. Second condition. You need to buy a basket of great companies that you believe will be great for the next 20 years. Third condition. You have to buy when the market is down or flat. You see, the stock market is like a roller coaster. If Eddie invested his 500,000 pesos at the peak of that roller coaster, his earnings will be much lower. Fourth condition. You have to reinvest the dividends. What are dividends, you ask? Remember, there are two ways of earning money in the stock market. First is when the stock price, also called share price, goes up from the time you bought it. You call this capital gains. Second is when giant companies give a share of their profits. They do this once or twice a year. You call this dividends. If you reinvest the dividends, that's like adding to your investment over time which is a bit like the total strategy. Sneak Preview 
The solution to the inherent problems of the buy and hold strategy is the turtle strategy. What's that? I'll explain it in more detail in the next chapter. But here's a sneak preview. If Eddie invested his 500,000 pesos in the equity fund and it grew by 12% a year, he'd have 15 million pesos after 30 years. But if he added 5,000 pesos each month for 30 years, he'd end up with 31 million pesos. Stock prices don't climb up in one smooth line. It climbs up in a jagged line, going up and down like the peaks of a Rocky Mountain range. And some giant companies, because of unexpected turn of events, don't climb up at all. But if you follow the turtle strategy, you'll still earn. Turtle, the trained investor. A turtle investor does the most boring thing in the world. He invests small amounts of money each month in giant companies. Whether the market is up or down, actually, especially when the market is down, he invests regularly. Mr. Turtle is so slow, his friends around him laugh at his investing program. They jeer at him. They tell him to give up. They say things like, hey, why not just buy a lotto ticket? You'll have more chances of earning big money than whatever you're doing. But Mr. Turtle Investor keeps at it year in and year out. And that's why he wins first place in the marathon. By the way, our turtle has a name. I call him Sam. Sam is short for Strategic Averaging Method. I'll explain this strategy later in this book. See the appendix. Our goal is modest. Earn 12% to 20% each year over a 20-year period. Before I go into details of Sam, let me show you why turtle beats sloth and rabbit. Why turtle beats sloth? A trained investor, turtle, beats a typical investor, sloth. Let's go specific and take the Philippine Long Distance Telephone Company. BLDT is the largest telecommunications company in the country. Note, to make this example simpler, let's say that the investor didn't reinvest the yearly dividends. Instead, the owner withdrew the dividends for shopping money. BLDT stock has been going down the past few years. In 2008, its stock price was 2,600 pesos per share. By 2011, it was at 2,400 pesos. That's terrible, right? Imagine if Mr. Sloth bought 100 shares of PLDT in 2008. That meant he invested 260,000 pesos. If Mr. Sloth sold it in 2011, it would have been worth 240,000 pesos only. After four years, he would have lost 20,000 pesos. Sad, right? But Mr. Total isn't a buy and hold guy. Instead, he invested small amounts every month from 2008 to 2011. By doing so, he was able to buy at the lower prices while it was going down. The result? Mr. Total will have gained, drum roll please, 11% growth every year. That's 44% growth in 4 years. Isn't that amazing? Yes, Phil Diddy went down, but Mr. Turtle's money went up. That's the power of Turtle's method over Sloth's method. Let me now tell you how Turtle can win over Rabbit. Why Turtle can beat Rabbit? Here's the big question. Who earns more? The trained rabbit trader who tries to earn 60% a year or Sam the total investor who tries to earn 12% to 20% a year? The answer seems obvious. The, of course, the trained trader. May answer? Not necessarily. Like my story above, total investors can actually become richer than rabbit traders. Here's why. Why the total can beat the rabbit? Trained traders, rabbits, will always be partially invested. By the very nature of trading, they can put all their money in the market every time or every month or every year. But regular investors, turtles, are almost always fully invested year in and year out. So the compounding effect 
even if it's just 12% growth a year, will be much more. This is the reason why answering the question, who earns more, isn't as easy as it sounds. It's highly possible that a total investor can out-earn a good trader in the long term. So here's my message to you. Settle it in your heart. Make a decision now. Never be a squirrel. Don't ever be envious of a speedy rabbit. Be better than a sloth. And be at peace that you're a turtle. Just do the boring, unexciting, dreary, monotonous investing that you do, trudging along one foot in front of the other. And I'll see you at the finish line many years later with your millions. Let me show you now the phenomenal lifestyle principles of Mr. Turtle.